Now, things have come to a head this week. Uh, huge, huge thanks to Susie last week for such an impassioned and wonderful plea to the government bodies and to Creative Scotland to fund this industry. It is starting to take traction. It has taken traction in the last couple of days. It was mentioned in the First Minister's briefing yesterday for the first time, which is wonderful. Um, what I want to do tonight is, rather than take the kind of passion out of it, is to give you some actual facts. Um, regardless of if you take away the fact that this club uh, exists in Glasgow, Edinburgh and Newcastle and it pays the wages of so many comedians and it has created so many of the best comedians. One of the, thing, the best things I saw on uh, Twitter today was the fact that ballet is getting funded. Now, if I was to ask you at home, name your five favourite ballet performers, you wouldn't be able to do it. If I was to ask you to name your five favourite comedians, you'd be able to do it easily. That is how much of an important part it plays in our society. The facts are, um, directly to the government and to Creative Scotland, there are three different branches of this. Uh, first of all, uh, the fact that the stand gives a ridiculous amount of support to charity. Um, I've not mentioned it before. Every single month, there are benefits in this room, there are benefits in Edinburgh, there are benefits in Newcastle. The charities don't pay for this room, the charities don't pay for the staff, the charities don't pay for the comedians. We all do it for free, the staff do it for that. The venue are quite happy to have these charities because it helps them. Now I'm just going to run through some quick uh, figures for you here because that's what's kind of needed to get through to government. Uh, uh, the government, uh, the clubs have helped raise over £100,000 in the last five years for local charities through the monthly benefit gigs in Edinburgh, Glasgow and Newcastle. Uh, here are some examples of the funds that have been raised for some of the charities. Okay, the Nelson Mandela Glasgow Statue Fundraiser, uh, over £1,000. The Benefit and Women's Aid in Edinburgh, over £1,000. Benefit and Aid of MS, £1,000. Marie Curie, £1,500. Benefit in aid of rape crisis, over £1,000. Uh, Epilepsy Scotland, over £1,000. Uh, Glasgow, Susie, last week, every single year, does a benefit uh, for Maggie's benefit that helps uh, cancer sufferers raise £3,000 last year. This is not just a comedy club. This is a club that is given back to charities where other people aren't, and it's given people a laugh, and it's given people that are suffering the most a laugh. Uh, that is one aspect of it. Uh, the second aspect is the financial benefit that this kind of club and all other comedy clubs, I'm not just talking about the sand, all other comedy clubs in uh, Scotland provide. Um, the best example I can give you is I when I did a gig last year, I did a gig in Brighton and I met a couple who had come up to Scotland from Brighton to see Kevin Bridges uh, for the night. Now they had flown up, uh, they had come to see Kevin. In that entire time they had bought tickets for the Hydro, one of many, many, many tens of thousands that had bought tickets for the Hydro, making that the most profitable and most popular show in the Hydro that year, eclipsing Justin Timberlake, eclipsing Beyonce, the most popular show, they had bought tickets for that. Beforehand, they had paid to get in a hotel for two nights, contributing to Scottish economy. They had bought two meals in a restaurant. They had gone out beforehand and gone out afterwards in bars and paid into the Scottish comedy. The next day, they had stayed the night and they had again paid for a meal. They had come to the stand to see another comedy show and put back in to the Scottish economy. This is what I'm talking about. This isn't just, this entire industry feeds off on so many other things. And every single time somebody buys a ticket to come and see a comedy show, they are funding every other industry around about it. The amount that this brings in to the Scottish comedy is unbelievable. The third thing I want to say is on an aspect of mental health. Now, since this has been done, I have been very, very fortunate to have been doing this show for over 17 weeks now. Um, the messages that I have had personally over people that have said that this has helped them through it, 
it is the only thing they look forward to during the week. The people that are sitting on their own and they feel like part of a community. We have created a community online like no other online show has been able to do. I know people that I have never ever met because they watch this show every single week. I get the messages that are, people are saying that this has helped them get through the entire crisis. We've had them tonight. Personally, this has been an absolute lifeline for me. Comedy has been a lifeline for me. A couple of years ago, I did a show about my own mental health issues, and I would never have had the courage to talk about it in public if I hadn't been able to do that show in the form of stand-up. This is ridiculously important. And I understand Fiona Hislop, I understand Nicola Sturgeon, that we might be in an annoyance. I understand that we might be irritating. I understand that... It might be something you would like to go away. But do you know what's even more irritating? Do you know what's even more of an annoyance? Is the staff at the stand who are now facing redundancy. That's annoying for them. It's annoying for us as comedians that have put this amount of effort into our craft, that have played this game and have forged this path and watching our colleagues down in England that are able to get back to work, that are able to be funded as they already have. That's what's annoying to us. We desperately want to work. I understand that we can't, but until we can't do that, please, please help us because you will massively miss us if we're not there when we come out of this.